All right, well, let's respect everyone's time. Everyone's turned up on, on time, 11 o'clock. Good to see you, everyone. I um, used to be able to see people on Zoom, so I'm, I'm missing seeing the seeing the engagement here, mate. How many have we got joining us? We've got, uh, we've got 18, 19 participants uh, so far. So cool. usually people just pick, we'll be coming in a little bit later on, but this is recorded, okay, sure. so I can send yeah, out nice. the recording to everyone as well after Great. this. Yeah. Good as well. Awesome. Well, anyway, thank first of all, thanks for thanks for joining uh, us, David. My pleasure. Um, for anyone who doesn't know myself, um, who's jumped on one of these webinars before, my name is Ben. I'm the co-founder of a company called Real Growth, and we help real estate agents um, build their pipeline uh, and process, help them with their building their pipeline for new business. I'm also the co-founder of a company called Nurture, uh, which is a simple software tool that allows agents to foster and build the relationships with the people on their existing database so they can convert those those leads and those homeowners into listings. Um, so first of all, thanks, David, for joining us on the call today. Right. Those of you who might not know David, David is a successful auctioneer uh, and real estate coach based out of Auckland, New Zealand. And um, yeah, so we're lucky enough to have you join us. So thanks so much, David. No worries, mate. Good to be here. For those of you who might not know like you, David, I'm sure there's many probably jumped on this call because they wanted to hear from from yourself. But um, David was the sales manager and sales trainer at Barfoot and Thompson. Uh, he's an auctioneer and now a successful real estate um, business coach. Um, and so you've got a wealth of experience. But I thought before we dive into it, David, and dive into the nuts and bolts of prospecting, do you mind sharing a little bit about, I guess, your journey in real estate? You know, you've worn many hats over the years in terms of, you know, an agent, auctioneer trainer, sales manager, coach, like able to just kind of give us a bit of a overview of, you know, what that journey's looked like. Mate, well, you're such a, um, you're such a gentleman. Nobody loves to talk about themselves uh, more um, than an auctioneer. Uh, <laughs> so, um, mate, I'll keep it brief. Effectively, I got into a in 2005, but the part that I think relates um, specifically to today is that before I got into real estate, actually, and I would have been 16, I think, 16, 17, I was actually working in an outbound call center generating leads for real estate agents. Uh, real estate's a pretty mature industry, really. And whilst there's some very cool innovations uh, vis-a-vis Nurture App, um, but I think the technology uh, that we had then is similar to today. It needs to facilitate conversations, basically. Um, and I was picking up the phone and making it ring. And I do think, uh, you know, if you're in real estate and the phone's not ringing, um, then actually it's your responsibility to make it ring. Uh, and outbound calls is definitely one way you can do that. So I was quite lucky to be doing that before I got into real estate. And that was kind of something that got me thinking and, and probably led to me being in real estate. Um, and then, yeah, I sold for a, a um, yeah, got got in. Uh, I sold for about seven years. Then moved into BNT as a as a um, corporate trainer, and then moved from that managing one of Buffett's um, big branches. And then I went out on my own as an independent trainer. And I was just saying, I think uh, it, there's two things. I hear the words coaching and training being superimposed a lot. I do think they are fundamentally different. A coach, uh, at least my approach to coaching is, you know, I expect that. Um, it's less about me talking and probably more me asking questions and helping someone come to their conclusions. And I also tend to train a little bit that way, but training is a little bit more like a scripted type thing where ideally you help people get to things in, in, in the most direct way possible. Um, so I guess I think of myself as both of those things. Um, and I brought auctions into the business as a professional auctioneer uh, just a few years ago. And I think it's interesting. I wish, I wish I could see hands from our audience. I always like to ask people, did they start in a hot seller's market or did they start in you know a, a, a tough buyer's market? It's interesting how we use those words uh, because it's, I think that fundamentally shapes a little bit of what your baseline is in the business. So my baseline was 2005, which was a screaming hot seller's market. Um, but then it turned pretty rapidly just before the GFC and then the GFC crushed it. So I actually sold through both parts of the cycle. I found that adjustment incredibly difficult as a young man. Um, it didn't have, uh, yeah, was not equipped with the tools to handle it, to be fair. Um, I managed to tough it out, um, as I think many agents have um, of recent times. Uh, and the big thing about that, guys, you got to remember is um, you want to focus on how much of your market share you have because 
if you're just focusing on the number of sales that you're making. I mean, I talked to Diego, who I know you know well, Ben, and I can't remember his exact numbers, but let's call it, you know, 350 sales one year and 220 the next. Uh, and it's actually, um, you know, that might seem like, wow, that took a big hit. And I'm sure it was tough. But the reality is, is actually his market share grew. So I think that's an important thing to just recognize where your performance is. And I yep. do think that all of this stuff starts with prospecting because if you, uh, you know, certain things in the business you can control and certain things you can't, but prospecting, if we look at that word, um, it really is something that you can be um, fully in control of. And if you do accept responsibility for generating your own opportunities, rather than hoping that you might get a referral or that uh, you know your, your your office manager might you know, give you a lead in, you know those things are great. And there's an indirect uh, kind of law of of effort where I see opportunities come from side table when you're making effort over here. But um, uh, that is something I really like about prospecting is that you can do it on the smell of an oily rag. You're in complete control of it. And there is a direct relationship to agents who are able to uncover leads to agents who are able to sell through the other end. So there you go. That's a bit of the background and a little bit of a lead into prospecting. Yeah, no, I appreciate appreciate that. So let's say I was, um, let's say an agent was to sit down with you, David, and say, hey, you know, I want to do more deals in 2024. Um, uh, I know in order to do this, I need to have more conversations with homeowners. Um, what should I be doing, David, on a weekly basis? What plan should I put in place to to to, to increase increase my deal my deals in 2024? You know, like what does a week look like if we can plan it out for this person who's sitting down with you and you had a bit of paper and you're going to write it out for them? Well, I actually start off with what you want. In other words, it's easy just to get plunged into prospecting, but I think it's more important to recognize the fruit of the prospecting. And that's what we, I, I take the assumption, if someone's coming to see me or we're talking here, you want to be making sales and we're in a business, so that's your revenue. Um, and, and I think it's important to actually make sure that your revenue expectations are congruent with two things. Number one, what the lifestyle is that you absolutely need to have. And also, you know, that that there should be um, the, the target that you're shooting at, which is the lifestyle that you're actually planning to have. Uh, and, and I think we're always kind of moving in between those two things, but it's important that you're um, not silly about this. If you need a certain amount of income and you're not getting it, uh, you must change something. And sometimes just being very clear of what your outgoings are for, for what you're actually needing um, can be uh, you know hugely motivating to just actually have that clarity. So I think a lot of times salespeople aren't. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great tragedy that Many salespeople um, make plenty of money, but build very little wealth. So I would say it's wise to be baking into your plan the the income that you need in order to provide for today, you know, cater for who you want to be tomorrow, and also provide for a future for you and your family, and and make advantage of the the um, industry knowledge that you should have about real estate. And my old sales manager, shout out Steve Allen, if you are watching this, uh, he always said, David, make money selling real estate, build wealth buying it. So. Clearly, I like property. Um, yeah. But I would say as far as the pro moving from... Having a, having a strong York, why, to summarize what you're saying. Is yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the whole strong why thing is such a buzzword. Um, yeah. But if you actually think about what that means, yes. I, I reckon you need to ruthlessly engage with reality. You know, like equal parts, be positive and have a great attitude. But, you know, um, faith without works is dead. I mean, you can think positively all you like. If you don't do the right actions, well... You know, so I think that's where, uh, you know, in coaching, I really encourage people to be very clear on what they want, then be very clear on what is reality. What's your reality? What's the reality of the market? What's the reality of what your fee is of, in terms of what the income is from a sale? What's your clearance rate in your marketplace? And for you personally, uh, you know, knowing that you can then go back to how many listings you actually need to win. And then the piece, and, and I do see, um, you know, the, this part being the, the probably the two biggest levers that salespeople hold in their hands in terms of their personal activity and skill and one of those levers is how good are you at the listing table and so if we're working in reverse if you like or coming from what you want all the way back to what you can do about it you're actually you're, you're stepping through that piece and, and a, a big piece of that I think is that conversation and your ability to actually win the listing and I love that I think for salespeople who start and do well in a hot market chances are they were 
a phenomenal list is because it's super competitive and you must win the listing. Thereafter, you got a tailwind. It's easy. Whereas in a, in a in a tougher market, all that means really is that because we act for the sellers, the market is more in favor of the buyer in terms of the market dynamics. But it, the common thread for both of them is actually the prospecting piece. So you have to you have to be good at listing in both markets, but it's absolutely absolutely critical um, in a, in a hotter market. But when you go past that, and and I think that's a conversation for another day, given the topic that is prospecting. But please, don't be silly about this. If you win, if you find yourself in front of ten people who end up listing with competitors, and you haven't listed them, no wonder you find it hard to prospect. Because in your head, you know, this is a gross waste of time because I'm finding opportunities and I'm not winning the business. So I'm not making any sales. So of course, I don't want to pick up the phone or go and do anything else that you can do to find opportunities because you know you're squandering them. So I want you to be very clear about, and the way to do this, by the way, is to look at everything that you've appraised. The longer back you go, the better your intelligence will be. Um, but the longer back you go, you're, you're getting a combined number, uh, or if you're looking at how good you are at it, of your ability to follow up and your ability to be there at the table. So if you're looking back over, let's say, two years and you look at all the appraisals and recognize not every appraisal is a listing opportunity, and then you work out how many of them were listing opportunities simply by looking at how much has come to market. So you look at all the appraisals, look at what's come to market, and then go, well, okay, out of these things, how many of them did I win? And that'll give you roughly how, how many of the listing opportunities you had, you were successful on, will tell you what your percentage is. And, and that is an, an area that some agents really need to work on, but others, and, I, and I'll have this conversation, I'll say, oh, well, most of the time I win the listing. I'll say, great. So if you want more, all you need is more opportunities. So what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Got yeah. So what so what does that so let's let's have a fictitious example. We wanna we wanna do 250k gross, okay. Um, and we know we know we need to do let's say we want to do 30 listings. Let's just say we want to do 30 listings or something. Mm -hmm. Um what, what does that game plan look like from a prospecting point of view? Like, you know, what so 30 listings, what like, like I would say if you're shooting for 30 listings, yeah, based on what I see with a you know, a lot of salespeople you're right in that kind of upper mid tier of agents. You know, there's clear air between that upper mid tier and the agents who are creaming it. You know, if you look at the percentages of agents, and I don't know exactly what it would be, um, but the chance that certainly if you're in Auckland and you're doing 30 listings and getting a good portion of those um, sales through, um, then you're doing, you're doing reasonably well. Um, in order to be able to do those kind of numbers, we have to address like what percentage of those listings are you winning? Um, and so let's just say, Let's say you're doing um, a balance of averages. Let's work with 50%, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you're, and to be fair, I think that means you are probably better than average. So just right. recognize, you know, if you're winning 50% of the listings, the chances are you are a better than average agent at the, at the listing table. So there you go. If you're winning 50% of them, then it's simple numbers there. If you are wanting to list six out uh, 50, you need 60 opportunities. And depending on the quality of your client base and who you're calling, how many calls you need to make. So these are the kind of questions you've, you've got to delve into and kind of use your own enlightened self-awareness or talk to myself or, or, or your manager or a, a, you know experienced friend in real estate. You want to look at it and go, well, how how much of uh, you know how how many conversations does it take on a balance of probabilities? And I've got some salespeople who um, are beginning their journey. I remember one guy. I won't name him, but I've got him clearly in my head. He had done 150 appraisals and not listed anything after six months. How did he do so many appraisals? He had a call center ringing for him, generating appointments, but he was frustrated because he wasn't listing them. Fast track down, I think he's been in the business like seven years. He is the top salesperson in his market and he is still listing off the back of those initial appointments. So I guess there's a very long um, income stream if you follow up well and treat people like your clients before they are your clients because then they yeah. will become your clients. And to yeah. get to that point, you, you need to work out how many calls. And I'd say if we just talk some real rough, rough numbers for those of you going, I've got no idea and I don't want to do the math. I'd say if you talk to 20 people, you should find at least one opportunity. And you could do this very easily if you want to have a look at an area and go, sweet, how many properties sell in this area as an annual turnover? So let's say you've got a thousand properties 
and you look at that over a course of um, a, a number of years to smooth out for market fluctuations and then work out what the mean is, the average as a mean um, for that for that area, you'll know what your annual turnover is. And I typically see this sitting somewhere in between five to 6%. Uh, and some marketplaces are higher. I've seen some of them like 9%. But if you've, if you've got one sitting in the, let's say conservatively at 5%, well, one in 20 households are going to be sold, which means that you should find at least one opportunity out of 20 conversations because there's plenty of people who are assessing their opportunities before they're actually coming to market. And definitely in the market that we've seen, not everyone does sell. So there's going to be some listings that come on stream that are not actually sold out the other end, but that 5% annual turnover is likely a pretty a good figure that you can start with as a nominal number if you want. Okay, cool. So so what does that look like from a getting started point of view, right? As we door knocking, are we, so where are we, where, where are we having these conversations? How are we, are we you know, is it? Well, that's a, that's, that is the great thing about real estate. I know nuts. you want some ideas and I feel like let's, let's nut down into them, but I, I want to say one last um, yeah, sure. It won't be the last, but definitely philosophically, it yeah. really doesn't matter. Like it is an absolute mistake to think that the only way you can find an opportunity is going door knocking or picking up the phone. By the way, those are two very, very solid ways to prospect and you should use them. But I meet people on the ferry. I meet people on a bus. I meet people on a street. Like you can meet people in the queue to buy the new iPhone. Like it, <laughs> seriously, I, I, like, I kid you not, I literally got a contact with someone who wants to make a move in real estate standing in line at the one store in Burma. So like the, the opportunities are all around you. The yeah. key is you have to be open to them. And people talk about luck. And I'd say that's quite lucky. It is lucky. But what what is that? Luck mm. is very simple, I reckon. Luck is preparation meeting opportunity. If you know your stuff and you're kind of a curious person, and if you like people, you'll find it easy to talk to people and you'll be curious about them. Those are the two most important qualities for building a relationship quickly because people like to talk about themselves. Listen to me. So here we go. If you can get people talking and you're genuinely authentically curious about them, and of course you're in real estate. So don't be apologetic about it. Be curious about people in real estate and you'll find people who need help in real estate. And and you, my suggestion to you strategically is stop focusing on winning listings. Stop thinking about, do you want to sell your house? Nobody is wanting to list their property. Nobody is wanting to go through the pain of selling their house. They hate that idea. Have you sold a house recently? <laughs> it's not the thing you want to do, but you all, well, you all, put this way, I think that the opportunity is to shift your focus and start thinking about, well, What's the forward motion here? What would a sale enable them to do? And so you don't even need to talk about that piece. In fact, I talked to a lady, Lynn, just yesterday. I mean, she's brilliant at this. It, she is, I would say, nosy, uh, but but quite nice as well. So she gets away with it. And she's just like, where are you off to? What's yeah. your move? What's the next thing? So I think, it, you know, adopt that mentality of thinking about what's their next step. Because once you know where they're going, then you can actually find out where they are and then you can be their coach and help them to get there. And the great thing about being somebody's coach and buying and selling is, well, when they make those decisions, you get paid for it. Yes, that makes complete sense. But there sense. you go. So where to? I gave you a whole bunch of examples. But seriously, I do this work in an office and I say, hey, come up with ideas for prospecting. There'll be 30, 40, 50 ideas generated. Nobody's short of ideas. I'm going to give you some. But seriously, you don't need my ideas. You know how to find people. The thing that stops people is just they're not actually putting themselves out there to have those conversations. But let's go real quick into some very easy uh, things that I think you could do. Yep. You can easily identify a property that has just come on the market. Depending on the quality of the data that you have access to, you could very easily pick up the phone and call the people that are within a tight radius of that property that you're already connected to. And it's as simple as saying, hey, thought of you today because we've just listed one down the road. And I'm not sure if you're still uh, keeping a bit of an eye on the local market, but whether whether or not that might be a property of interest for you. Don't check them on the sale unless you have them keyed and you go, actually, these are someone's, this is someone that I appraised. So you can then just say, hey, just listed a property. It doesn't even have to be yours. You know, your competitors have listed a property. You don't have to pretend it's yours. You can say, look, I noticed a property just came on the, around the corner from you, made me think of you, because it did. It doesn't matter if you're using Nurture app or your own database or whatever it is. The technology made you think of them. You don't have to tell them that piece, but made me think of you yeah. and, and, and thought you might be interested to see how the campaign goes. Shut up. 
let them let talk. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the biggest part. Like with scripts and dialogues, you really need some little openers. You need some up the sleeve one liners that can extend the conversation. You need to be a master of conversation with some little tactics that, you know, I've stolen these from Chris Voss, but you don't have to have a question for everything. You don't have an answer for everything, but you absolutely can mirror everything. And a mirror is very simply just the one, two or three words at the end of a sentence with a little bit of a curious intonation at the end that cues them to keep talking. Can you give us an example talking. of what you mean there? Because I, I, yeah, I'm really keen to give an example of what, you kind of, what you're saying there. An example? Example, yeah. Like having that, that curious that you might not have the question. You're saying Chris Voss has that, that, that approach. Like, do you have an example we could like kind of run through? Like if you called me up and you said, uh, hey, Ben, um, I thought of you the other day. Uh, I, 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 I probably just been listening around the corner for you. I thought I'd give you a call and let you know. Right, happy, happy to do one. The funniest thing is, I just when when you were literally doing that, I said an example, and that was mirroring, and it got you talking further. So thank you for playing with me. <laughs> but seriously, you'll watch this back and you'll see. Um, but but as far as I, I see where you're going, let's do a role play, mate. So I mean, if, if, let's just imagine you you literally this has happened around the corner from you, and we'll just make up some fictitious streets, but we'll play with it and and uh, let's use the frame that you potentially are considering a move. And I don't know what you're planning on next time, Ben, but maybe maybe just be yourself. Um, and let's see what I'll happens. Just be mate. myself at my yeah, good stuff. No yep. Yeah, they've been. David here. Hey, appreciate you probably busy. Keep the cool brief. Um, was thinking of you because we've just seen one come on the market around the corner from you uh, and thought you might be keen to uh, hear how the campaign goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the sold, sold sign went up. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. What's, what's, yeah, yeah. Did you list it or was it with someone else? No, no, that's actually listed on the, uh, on the market with ABC Realty. Um, but I've got a pretty good ear to the ground with it. Uh, and I know there's going to be a bit more interest uh, in the local market. Uh, there's only one property, but I'm sure there's more out there who want to buy it. Uh, but I guess uh, just as a bit of um, a bit of insight into kind of what's happening, if if you're interested, no, no problems that you know. Um, I just wondered in terms of uh, your next move, mate. Uh, how, how's progress going? We we actually just keen to see what goes on around us because we we really don't really know what our what that sells with Mike's going to kind of determine what we're going to might get for ours. So. Um, what you might get for yours? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm actually yeah, quite interested to know what that does go for because uh, it actually is a similar property to ours. So yeah, no, um, no problems, mate. Yeah, easy. Yeah, keep us up hey, there. We, no worries. To be fair, um, there's been a few other recent sales as well. So whilst I'm happy to keep you posted on exactly what happens with that campaign, it sounds like you're still trying to work out exactly what you might have to play with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hey, well, it'd be good to catch up with you again, mate. Why don't I, um, I should have a quick look in the diary. Um, today's pretty much flown, uh, but I wonder if you're, how's Monday for you? Um, maybe around about 11 o'clock? Yep. Monday 11 is good. Yep. Beautiful, mate. What's that for? Oh, it's going to pop around and oh, um, right. help you calibrate. Yeah. It sounds like you're sort of working out exactly where you're sitting at the market at the moment. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, no, sure, definitely. Keen, keen, keen to have a chat. I mean, Ben, you were the easiest counterpart to play with, but I know, to be fair, I'm too easy. I'm too calm. I'm too <laughs> I, calm. I don't know if it was to be to be fair. I don't know if it was a, a stellar example of dialogue mirroring or anything. No, I tell you something. I did do there, and I think seriously, this is something that, especially because uh, I'll sit with people. Like if I do a prospecting session with an office, um, I sit there and I listen to people, and I'll even make calls with people, and I notice. Um, that some people are really good at closing and some people just end up having a really long-winded conversation. And actually, you've got to think, what's the purpose of this conversation? Uh, at least if it's okay for me to tell you what I think the purpose could or should be, is you really want to be helping to progress that person towards their goals. Yep. In other words, we always think, oh, I'm trying to get a listing or I'm trying to get an appointment. And I agree with you. Those are the, the functional things that come out of it. But I, th- I can't even remember the exact dialogue I used, but I can't remember what you were planning to do in this scenario. But I'm just trying to pretend that I've been talking to you before because it was a callback to my database because of something that had happened in the market. But I just said, well, how's progress, if I recall correctly? And that's yep. a great line to use because all you're trying to help that person is to achieve their goals. I know it seems very like airy fairy achieve their goals, but you, vis-a-vis, they are, you know, they're, they're trying to get a job in Melbourne and they're just waiting for that to happen and then they want to be on the market. But but they are, for you, 
they're someone that you identify when they were kind of curious how much they had, had to play with. Or maybe like there's so many different examples. Every single one is slightly different, but you'll see the patterns. And the key part there is, is if you know what their objective is, your follow-up's much easier. If you don't know what their objective is, very hard to help them achieve it. So you want to be professionally curious. And I think you 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 can and should be professionally curious about people's next move because you are in real estate. And some people don't want to tell you and that's fine. Move on. Yeah. That makes complete sense. Isn't it? That was actually kind of e- easy for me because we've actually just put our house on the market right now. And I've been Have watching. You? Yeah. So, so, and I've been watching all the sales that have been happening in the area. So, like, genuinely, I would like that appointment, David. So, uh, Monday. Yep. No, no, no problems, mate. Good. I'll tell you what. Look, and here we are almost slipping back into role play. But sincerely, like, if you weren't yet quite on the market and you were planning to be and you were curious, we would tell that we were both kind of curious about the same things. Like, I'm watching the local market. So are you. I yep. might have the inside scoop on some of those campaigns and I'd probably use those exact words. And I'd just say, mate, look, I'd love to catch up with you again. It sounds like you're definitely getting closer to making a decision. And the market has been changing a lot recently. Like, it has seriously, it has been very, variable um so i've got the inside scoop on a couple of those other campaigns that have just closed so i can let you know exactly where the buyers were sitting what kind of feedback they had and at least give you a better idea on what kind of market environment you're going to be entering in so anyway that's some those are some uh those are not one-liners but there's yeah. some chat that you could pull some of my words to put into your own chat um i want to give you an up the sleeve example just because yep. I know people tuning in here for scripts and dialogues. And I seriously, I think if you understand what you're trying to achieve and become less uh, become less scripted, I think that's a good thing. But I have some little things that are scripted, which can help you. So for example, you might say to people uh, when you're in the conversation, if you're just trying to figure out if there's a chance to do something, hey, uh, uh, I, I know you're not making a move right now, but if you were, what would it be? Upsizing, downsizing, or moving out of the area? Yeah, yeah, so. and that's that's a, that's an alternative close. So people will either say we're doing one of those things, or they'll say none of those things, but we we could be buying an investment property. So you don't even have to cover that, and it'll still come out. Yes. Um, we've got the mirroring. That's a I think an important um, conversation extender. Uh, and as I say, you can check out Chris Voss explaining this in great detail and it's good stuff. And then you practice it. The other thing that he talks about, which I think is like has been really helpful to me. And we always do these things anyway, but because it's just part of human nature. But when you realize what it does and you decide deliberately out of courtesy to that person to use some of these tools, um, it can open up conversation that you might not otherwise have. So sometimes you notice something and, and you, you, you pick up maybe there's a bit of hesitation, for example. And I'll just call it. Say, ah, oh, sounds like you're trying to, um, trying to work out what your next step is. With that curious tone. And that- totally. That, I mean, I don't know. That, that wouldn't be a Chris Voss example. There's a David Cochran example of the technique, which is you label what the emotion is or what's going on for that person. So empathy is understanding or being able to, to put yourself in the other person's shoes. So if you're able to sort of hear or notice something, you know, reading in between the lines that there's hesitation, then call it out, but do it in a polite way. Um, the other thing that you can do if you know what's happening is you can literally say, I, I know this is a hard decision for you. you know, those are some other ways that you can do cross false techniques. But for your prospecting work, you know, you can ask the question about what the next move is. Another thing that I think uh, that we, I kind of got sidetracked on, but when I was talking about how I was sitting with people making calls, you've got to close. So don't be afraid to get to know. In fact, I want you to get to know because at least when you get to know, you can get information. If you don't get to know, you're too you're, you're pussyfooting around the questions because you're afraid you'll get no. Don't be worried about getting no. That no is not, I don't like you. I'll never work with you. No, it's just like, well, we're not quite ready right now. And then you get to say, right now? And they'll say, oh, yeah, well, I was just waiting to see if my wife's got the job offer, whatever it might be. So you get the information. And then it might shortcut. Like I know right now, the time of year we are, we're, what are we, 24th of November, 2023. Well, 2024 is happening right now. Like every conversation that you're having right now is leading you into a great 2024. If you're not having the conversations, and plenty of people are not, 
then recognize you're starting unless you have got as many campaigns booked and ready to launch for the new year as you want, in which case I know some agents who are like this, they're looking to book campaigns because they don't want to have too much on. They want to manage their campaigns well. They're booking campaigns out for February. But the, the, the part is that if you are finding out that someone's moving in January, in January, you're too late. If you're yep. wanting to get the people who want to be sold by the end of Jan or have their properties, you know, transacting because of their plans for new year, those conversations are happening now. Some, some owners have already listed, some are in limbo. And what I mean by that is they've made a call that they're going to be doing something. They've probably got an agent in mind. They might, I even had this the other day, I sent a referral um, and it was with someone that I knew was the person who owned the property and we were talking and I realized he was going to be moving next year. And I just said, oh, have you got an agent of mine? And he did. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. I said, oh, by the way, you're a good agent. Um, have you have you had a second opinion? He said, oh, we're probably pretty happy. I said, oh, that's, that's all right. Um, I'm, I'm professionally curious uh, about the submission. I said, actually, and just so you know, I, I think it could be wise to get another opinion because at least that way you'll have a frame of reference. One or two things will happen. Either you feel even better about the decision that you've made or you might find out something you didn't know and decide to make a new decision. But if you don't have that information, how will you know? And he went, oh, that'd be helpful, mate. So anyway, we did. <laughs> but the, 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 part, the part about that that I want you to recognize if you're listening to this is if you're planning for 2024 and you're looking at what you want out the other end of the effort you put into real estate, work backwards from the sales figures that you're able to pull out of this based on the number of sales you make judged by the number of listings you need to hold and in order to work that out look at how you're going with your listing ability and then the big driver of thing the accelerator pedal whether you know no one in which case you can still go and network you can still go and knock on a door you can literally go street by street and we're using property sparks or poor logic or relab or whatever you're using like open it up look at the names of those people literally track them down on facebook linkedin google get the numbers make the calls uh, if you've already got a database or you've inherited one don't be a, like go go there if i find it interesting the sales people that are, are making new calls but haven't talked to someone that they sold a house to a year ago anyway i'm ranting i'd like to come, i'd like to come back to that in terms of not talking to the people that you have uh, um, sold a house to because I've had a personal experience with that and I want to share that story just a little bit later. But Mate, what uh, happened? I'll, I'll tell you I'll t uh, just a little bit later on when we go, go into the <laughs> part, but it makes it will make more sense. Otherwise, we'll go cool. off track again. But All right, mate. one of the things um, um, that I've found working with like agents over the last five years is that sometimes the biggest challenge is, you know, not knowing who are the relevant people on my database I should be talking to about the recent sales or recent listings in the area. Uh, for example, you know, like you said, you know, you called me just before because you knew that a sale had just happened near near me and you were just saying, hey, I just sort of let you know. But there are a lot of tools out there that do this, but I, I think a lot of agents still think, geez, who do I call and what do I talk to them about? Um have you found that as well? Like, who do I talk to? My my experience. What do I, what do I my talk experience is seriously, this is the thing. Agents get stuck with it because they think they need to have all the answers, but you just need to have a conversation. You've got to be brave enough to put yourself in that difficult position. But like, so I, I've got the exact scenario in my mind. I won't name the salesperson, but she's reasonably new. She was lucky that she was basically given. A, and it wasn't a, a physical open home register, but she was given data by the office of people that had inquired on properties with another agent in their business. They were not her. She'd never talked to them in her life, yet she had a list of these people. So she had their name. Some of them she had an address for, but most of them she didn't have an address for. And she had an email address and a phone number. And we were like, well, what do you do with this? And the first thing that I wanted to know was, well, where did you get this data? Because I want to know what the, the frame of reference is. And she didn't know, really. And then we worked out that they were inquiries. So then the simple scripting is, as you go, well, here we go. It sounds like, as you're calling them up, hey, have, have I got you at a bad time? Like, that's literally how it opened up. If you, if you, if you, if you're calling someone you don't know, you, so you answer the phone. Let's ring, ring, yep. ring, ring. G'day. Ben here. Hi, Ben. It's David from Ray White. Have you got a moment? Briefly. 
actually, and, and now contrary to my own, my own script, um, I think have we got you a bad time briefly, whatever. Uh, fantastic, stepping back into it. Hey, fantastic. Look, I, I'm just going through um, some records, and I understand you inquired on property a little while back. I wanted to find out if you're successful in finding something. Yeah, yeah, that was a while ago now, but a year a year ago actually. But uh, yeah, yeah, we did find a property. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you mind me asking where you bought? Uh, yeah, in um, St Albans. Um, yeah, St Albans, Christchurch. Oh, fantastic. It's a, it's a shock to me because um, I thought you were inquiring on property in South Auckland. Oh, I'm not joking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but think yeah, so, 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 so St Albans. Oh, fantastic. That's great, mate. Let's assume you're You're in St Albans. That's fantastic. Uh, and do you mind me asking um, wh where you bought it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 15 Severn Street in St Albans. Mm. Yeah, awesome, how, how, how's the house? Yeah, it's good. Hey? We've been doing a few renos and um you know got to work on it pretty straight away since we bought it a few renos yeah 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 need a bit of work when we bought it sounds like you um bought it with the intention of doing it up yeah exactly yeah, yeah that was the plan so hopefully we've added a bit of value over the over the over the year outstanding how long have you got to go you reckon are you, are you sort of almost finished or yeah yeah we just finished the, just finished the bathroom off um yeah a couple of months ago so it's uh, oh, looking pretty, pretty good. good now finally Finally, mate. Well, it sounds like it's been a bit of a journey to get there. Hey, um, uh, reason for the call is I'm I'm literally trying to find people that I might be able to help in real estate, uh, and it sounds like you might potentially be um looking for another project soon. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, we're pretty happy at the moment in the house, to be honest. Uh, now that it's all done, so nice. we're pretty happy. We're pretty happy uh, with the way it is. Yeah. No, good stuff. Hey, well, um, before I let you go, um, we have been doing a few of these recently, and it's definitely a good way for me to get out and about and just get more familiar because I don't really know St Albans that well. Um, it, would you be interested to know how much money you've made through your rent? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, it'd be good to know. Great. Yeah, if we've added enough value to it, for sure. Totally. I'll definitely be able to give you a bit of an uh, a bit of an idea. Um, can I just check in? How's Monday, eleven a.m. for you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Good. I mean, once again, Ben, thank you for making my life so easy. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> but, but to be fair, uh, I, uh, yeah. just out of, out of curiosity, this that sounds like a real scenario for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it is. I just use my real life scenarios. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And I mean, it, it, did you have agents contact you? How how did you end up? Well, now I'm taking you here to the conversation. Yeah, let me let, let's just go. Happen? Let's go to that conversation. Actually, let's go to that conversation. So basically, um, what was really interesting, we bought our house, we, we bought our house back in 2020. And I think agents should listen to this because maybe they have been in the same boat as, you know, the agent who, they were extremely helpful, the agent helping us buy our first home. Amazingly helpful, helped us every step of the way. Communication, amazing, great communicators. Mm. I thought these guys are great. Handed the keys over to us, never heard from them again. Never heard from them. Like, yeah. like I'm off their books. I don't know. Like, I'm just being completely. Ben, your 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 experience is not rare. Unfortunately. No, I, I know well, that as well. Foolishly, yeah. I'm, and I I know that because I, I work in this space. But I'm just like, I didn't. We we we'd done some renos. There was they didn't check in after a year. Just you know, for an and at least an anniversary appraisal on. Like, there you know, go team just it's, very it's quickly as you listen to ben right? right there every year and i, I gotta say oh i said i wouldn't name him but th this agent that i've got in mind who's the top of that marketplace remember i told you 150 appraisals in the beginning he kept generating more appraisals but every single one of them this is the genius of him he goes back and he appraises them annually he sends out a, he has a month by month approach to it he sends out an email to everyone for the month of november for example and he reckons he books about 50 percent of them so imagine that every year you're booking 50 percent of just your old appraisals but every sale that you make a hundred percent and but you know to be fair that's kind of best in class is actually doing that but even just a courtesy call to someone a month after the settlement you know or a, a year or just you know some contact from you um but absolutely nothing uh, will did you get them back so so obviously i'm just like this is horrible like they've been so good and now they've been so poor how did you feel like I'm curious. How did you I'm feel? Like, did oh, like, did you miss them? Did you ever wonder if they were going to contact you? Or I, I, I thought um, they just didn't care about me, basically. Mm. But I also had the mindset of, as I'm in this space, I'm like, 
think of the opportunity that this, if they sent it an uh, appraisal every year and we've been in the house for three years and we've now we've got it on the market and guess what? We don't have it on the market with the same agent because we mm. didn't go with them. But if they did an anniversary appraisal, if they'd checked in maybe once a year and if they'd say, keep me updated with the recent sales that have been going on in the area relevant to me and, and sent me an email and kept me updated and we had lots of points of contact and they were adding value to me over those three years, it would have been very hard for me not to re-engage them to sell the house. Mm -hmm. So, totally. that, yeah. that, so that, a, a text message, six text messages a year, maybe a text message once every couple of months, an appraisal once a year, maybe it's two hours of their time accum accumulated it all up, would have made them 20 grand in commission. Because we've got a house this is now. So I think we need to talk about this because this is like, yeah totally it's like the, like the thing upset for the, these people you know like they should yeah, have done it, but they didn't totally well the only thing that like a, the do you know what i wrote a word down because this is what i think may be happening for some people that watch this i, I imagine there is a real sense of guilt that exists in the in the market i do you know what i have experienced it myself when i was a salesperson because we all kind of know what we should do and that word should is a burden of guilt. So I, I would like to encourage you, if you watch this, and for some reason it's triggered that feeling in you, to just forgive yourself. Don't stress about it. I'm going every fairy with this, but I wanted to address it because that is a useless feeling. It will not help you. I'll tell you what will is two things. Number one, moving forward, you can decide whether you're going to do this or not do this. You don't have to do it. And you would be wise if you are not planning to follow up with people after you've sold them a house to at least manage the relationship and be professionally courteous. So once you've settled the property to just say, hey, I just want to let you know, we've had a really close relationship as I've been helping you purchase. Uh, and, and now I'm going to step away just out of respect to you. I, I feel like we became quite friendly and, and hey, I am here for you anytime. Please, if you have anything related to real estate, you, you want to know anything, I really want to be your friend in the business. But I'm just going to professionally step away and let you sort of choose what our engagement is going to be from this point onwards. Like, let them go with a lot of love if that's what you choose to do. Or do the opposite and just say, hey, look, I'm going to step back in a way. It's been a great journey, blah, blah, blah. Hey, look, you can expect to hear from me again. I'm going to be in touch with you. I would like to be able to give you an annual house update. Just sort of look at what you're doing. Make sure you're well covered for insurance. Just give you a fresh set of professional eyes on the property to make sure that you protect the value of your investment. Uh, and of course, if anything comes up in between, I want you to call me. I'm also, if it's okay, I want to be in touch with you. I send out a, a monthly email with a bit of a market update, and I just want to keep you updated with that. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd love you to share that with anyone else you think it might be helpful for in your neighborhood. Hey, and and look, I just want to say, I, I will give you a call in about a month's time because uh, I often find that now that people have moved in, they've settled in, that there's some questions that's raised. And look, I still have, have the owner on the other side. And, you know, if I can help with anything, uh, you know, I'll be checking in to just see if you have anything that you needed to, to ask in a month's time. And then boom, you hit him. And I remember I kind of got this idea. I want to give credit where it's due. Josh Vegan, he says, one day, one month, one year. And I reckon it's simple. I like little things like that can help your thinking. And there's some language you can use with it. So you call them a day after settlement. You call them a month after settlement. And you see them again a year after. Uh, it's as simple as that. And of course, Nurture App, you, I, go please, because by the way, just to give you a bit of background team, if you're watching this going, how's David tied up with Nurture? Uh, I got no fiscal uh, involvement. Um, I, I have a... A strategic um, alignment because I actually tried to develop an app go back four years ago and I, all I wanted it to do I thought was really simple I wanted to be able to upload my database I wanted to be able to then see all the addresses in it and I want to be able to mail merge a text message to those people so that when something came up it would do like the active pipe thing a little algorithm that said anyone within 500 meters of this property let me populate my database with that and let me mail merge a text out so i can say hey did you see such and such was listed let me know if you want more info or the opposite side of it when something's sold hey did you see such and such sold um if you want to know what that sale means for the value of your property let me know like that kind of stuff i thought would be a game changer and here we are yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, I appreciate how you, you when you reached out originally and stuff like that. I, I'd love to really quickly show people on on this call now actually just how how it will help agents with their prospecting. So it can help have those conversations that you've already talked about. You know, it just kind of. So do you mind if I just quickly share my 
share share a bit of a Mate, demo. Go ahead, bring it up. And while while Ben's doing this, I just say if you're watching this, um, and you particularly if you're working in an office with others, um, or maybe you run a business, um, Ben and I've been talking about this, and I think we're going to probably do a few of these next year. Um, but uh, I definitely want to put it out there. Um, Ben, I love helping salespeople make the calls because I get to see the instant results. I can promise you, if you make the calls, you will be rewarded. And I mean, literally, like I'll do a call session with an office and we'll see the uh, the appraisals that are generated and then I'll get the update of all the listings that come out of there. It's such an easy ROI to show as a trainer, which feels good, but also I, it's a game changer for, you, for, for a salesperson to actually be able to have that happen right there in front of them. Um, so I'd love to be involved um, uh, both obviously as a training session, um, but also working in with Ben, if you guys want, definitely reach out to us because we'd be more than happy to basically bake in nurture, which you're going to see in just a second, alongside that coaching element to actually help make sure you get really good results out of using it. Show us how it works, man. Yeah, right, yeah I'll show you how it works. So basically, um, I have uploaded my database into nurture, all of my homeowners, and what it's done is it's identified recent sales that have happened in the area. Um, so you can see here, for example, 21 Newham Place in Henderson. That's a recent sale that's happened. So say I click on that property. Um, it takes me through to that property. Say it's the property sold four days ago. And it shows me in blue all of the people on my database who live within a one kilometer radius. So the red is the sale, and then the blue are the people in my database. For example, Shika here, 99 meters away. I've already sent them a message on the 27th of the 10th. Um, you know, Feng, 177 meters away. But let's say, for example, I want to now send a message to Gloria, who I know I sold her house a couple of years ago, and I want to update her on what's selling at what about the sale. All I do is click send. And it creates the text message on my phone. I can see, you can see here, I've got Gloria already saved on my phone because we've worked together. It's like, hey, Gloria, it pre-populates the text. Hey, Gloria, I thought you might be interested to know that 21 Newham Place, a three-bedroom home nearby to us, just recently sold for 703000 I know you're not looking to sell, but it's always nice to know what's selling around you. If you'd like more information on the sale, just let me know. So it's a really soft, simple touch point. Um, Maybe I don't want to call them six times a year, but I can send maybe the odd text message every couple of months. All I need to do is click send um, directly uh, from my phone and it will send out. It looks like it's having problems here loading. Uh, you can hear me okay, I'll just say, yeah, you know, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, I just say it's really like, there's a couple of things to this. Uh, the first one that springs to my mind is actually the dynamic that I know exists when I try to go, oh, now who was that guy? I know where I met him. Uh, and like people who might want to use you because you, you know, you appraised their property or you had a really good conversation once. If you are following up with them in a way that is, um, in a way that they like, right? Yeah. And put it this way, a text message is pretty non-intrusive. I also think it's people like one of the least crowded channels to communicate on and, and don't be offended at the non-responses because that's the great thing about it. Like they can just like your message. Like if you get a thumbs up back from this outstanding, you know, like received good, you know, and the, and the reality is it just as it's these touch points. I remember it was Simon Sinek said um, you need 18 touch points a year to be top of mind. Well, I don't know if that's true or not because I don't think all touch points are equal. I think if you have a really powerful peak moment and you you know that can last and travel a lot of distance. But I tell you what, if you are going to get 18 reps, how much easier is it to just send a few of these? So anyway. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's just one touch point of many that you should be having, but text messages does have a 98% open rate, which is amazing. Um, but um, so you're going to get people who are reading your message, not always necessarily um, aren't answering on every single one. Um, but like Diego's come on this webinar before and he said as well, like he doesn't get an answer. If he doesn't get a response, that's completely fine. Like uh, he's, he's showing us his messages. It's not the purpose. It's not the purpose to get a listing out of this one message. It's just a touch point to keep them informed. So just if you've got any other questions, you can change your radius to show, you know, 
You can change your text message template as well in here. Uh, and you can do a few other things like you can upload your own sales manually into Nurture. Um, otherwise, they come directly from realestate.co.nz. And I'm just going to say, if you want to pause that quick, so I know you've got more to, to share, but um, the reason why I was trying to develop an app to do this was because in New Zealand, you can't spoof a phone number. So you can't just have, you know, Vault or my desktop or whatever you were using send out a text message from your own number at you know at scale um, but because this is built on the phone it's coming from your phone number it makes it so much better because people know that it's you and it's actually like my goal for you if you are a salesperson and you are working a client base is to have every single one of those clients they, they they've got the you want them to save your number when you call them they say could i be <laughs> Yeah. Because they've got your number saved. If you want to achieve that, it's got to be coming from the same number, which is something I love about this. 100%. Yeah. So so you can, I won't play the rest of this video, but you can add sales manually. You can see here I'm adding a 15 sort in place in Timaru into it manually. Now that's only shared, that's not shared amongst anyone. It's only within my own user. But say I'm sitting in an auction room right now, um, our Harcourt's auction, colleague sold a, sold a property auction, I can quickly put that into Nurture and instantly it's going to find everyone on my database who I can talk to about that recent sale um, before it even hits the property portal website. So that's quite powerful there. And we're also adding in just listed. So you can do that same call you mentioned before where you can say, hey, hey David, just thought I'd um, let you know 15 Smith Street just around the corner from you has just recently been listed. Um, would you like me to keep you updated on how that sale goes? Wh whatever the dialogue is, you've got the better dialogue, yeah. but you can do that via text message as well. So it's another. I just want to say the dialogue is is nowhere near as important as people think. It's actually making the calls and being human. Like be present and listen. And if you're not sure what to say, that's not a bad thing. Shut up. It's so funny when I sit down and do these calls. I remember literally with someone and I'm frantically writing. Like I've got a pad, I'm writing to try and suggest what this person should say. And then whilst she was trying to figure out what to say, the person literally said, Hey, well, why don't you pop around and have a look? <laughs> I went, Yeah. So the purpose is, you know, you've got to be having the conversations. Um, I do want to uh, very quickly, because uh, I'm mindful we have to finish in a second, but low-hanging fruit right now, you should be searching to see everything that's come on the market in the last two years that did not sell. Follow them up because people tried. They found the market was way worse than they thought it was. They took it off, but they still have the same need or whatever it was that was causing them to want to sell still there. So withdrawn sellers, I'll call them. You need to call them. The conversation's simple. Hey, I noticed you came on the market a little while back. Didn't look like you sold. I just wanted to find out if things were different, would you consider a sale? Or would you still consider a move? Shut up, let them talk, mirror, ask the questions, be curious, be courteous, close. Uh, similarly, I think, um, yeah, there's definitely, uh, depending on your marketplace, there may not be many private sellers, but definitely private sellers, uh, some will sell, many of them won't. Don't wait, call them. Don't be afraid when it says no agents. Literally say, I, I, I noticed you said you didn't want any agents. I take the assumption you're not wanting to list with someone. Hey, but can I ask if I did have a buyer that it suited, would it be all right for me to send them your way? Yes, literally, I'm suggesting you literally send them a buyer. Like the, 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 you and I both know it's not as easy to broker a sale as they think it is. And then you can call them back once the buyer went, hey, how'd you get on with that buyer? Like, anyway, we digress into too much detail, but that's another easy one. Also other agency listings. I remember Diego and I talking about this and we had a good chuckle. I just think you need to be extremely professionally courteous to your colleagues and other agencies because you may even work together at some point. So just remember that. Golden rule applies, treat them the way you want to be treated. At the same token, all fear and love and war in real estate. In other words, if they've been on the market uh, and they've just listed the property, if they've come to market and it's an area that you focus on, nothing wrong with calling them and say, hey, I know she came to the market. What's your next move? I'd love to help you. Like, don't chase the listing, chase the momentum and then follow up respectfully. And if they're having issues, send them back to their agent or to the agent's manager in the first instance to try and resolve them. But you can ask when they are listed and when the moment arises, uh, can I, are you on a sole agency? Oh, you are. Okay, for sure. No, I very much respect that. But just can, can I ask, do you know when it ends? 
what do you want to know that for? Well, it ends here. Well, I don't know. Ask for a copy of it. Uh, hey, look, if it's okay, if you're still unsold towards the end of your agency, well, would it be okay to ask that before you re-sign or extend, could I have the chance to have a chat with you about how we might do things differently? And just leave it there. So anyway, if there's some, uh, some low-hanging fruit in the current market, yeah. Um, nurture to me, I, I really like um, what you've done here, Ben. I wouldn't say I didn't think it. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some of those sessions that we talked about together. I think there's um, certainly some very big opportunities for agents out there who do want to grow their business, and it absolutely all starts with prospecting. 100%. And I, yeah, I'm excited to, yeah, to do these sessions in person as well next year as well, but at least Nurture gives agents that call list those people that they can makes it so with. much easier <laughs> makes it a lot easier so yeah if anyone wants to i guess i just looked at the time and realized i couldn't believe it's been almost an an hour and i'm like jeepers this is going to be a half an hour webinar we've still got 25 people here super engaged i want to wrap things up uh, and then leave it over to you, David. Do you are you able to engage any questions back from that audience i've got a, yeah, so, I've got a hard stop in about five minutes but I yeah, to have what i was thinking guys any questions. any questions you have for david um i'm checking the the q a so if you just dropped Drop the questions in the Q&A and I'll um, uh, ask them of David so he can see them. Um, but while you guys are thinking of your questions to ask David, I um, just want to quickly share some success stories just in two minutes. We've, the great thing is about Nurture is that I'm getting this feedback after you know three or four months of people getting listings from Nurture. like Agents who I know personally are saying, hey, Ben, just want to let you know we listed this property because we were, we contacted uh, and updated our database um, about recent sales and we're getting listings from it. So that's always amazing to hear. Um, we work with agents across New Zealand um, and they are all loving it. Diego, for example, is one of our biggest users. What's interesting actually is that 10% of our users, David, send 90% of the messages. And I don't want to go into this, but it's crazy. It's that Pareto, it's Pareto's principle on steroids. Exactly. It's interesting yeah. that Everyone's got the same tool, but only ten percent are using it to its maximum ability with it. So we could we could go, we could go down discipline and mindset on another webinar. I think before I before I go off track, but just to wrap things up, if anyone would like to trial nurture, um, we offer a thirty day free trial um, that you can give it a go, upload your data database, have a play around with it for thirty days. If it's not right for you, you can just cancel and no no harm there. Um, but if you were to continue after the free trial, it starts at $99 and every three months. So it's just paid quarterly. Um, but like I said, you can sign up, have a play around with it. And if it's for you, carry on using it. If not, no problem at all. So if you would like to, I'll send out an email to everyone who's on this webinar, just giving them a link to, to sign up to the trial. Otherwise you can get, get my number here or scan that QR code. Um, but David, just looking at the questions, um, oh, still, everyone's quite shy. Uh, no <laughs> hey, questions. I just want to say, uh, something came up earlier before about that um, guilt thing. Uh, I remember doing a call session like this. So I, I love to bring a group of agents together, maybe it's an office or a cohort. And um, I used to go around the circle and make people do it on the speakerphone. It was a little Ooh. too exposing for people, but I tell you what, the learnings were incredible. But anyway, this particular round circle, the 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 um, this is what the agent said. She goes, "Oh, actually, no, I won't call him. I was supposed to get back to him two weeks ago." And I said, "Well, well hang on a second. What do you mean?" She said, "Oh, I just feel a bit bad because I was supposed to get back to him." And and like it's a human thing where maybe we've made a mistake or we just feel oh, I'm not too sure or we you know we sold them a house two years ago we haven't talked to them before like since then like understand the feeling totally now recognize it does not serve you and just move forward and just be respectful and just say hey I, you could say hey I was thinking of you I think it's the easiest way to do it you know if you sold if it's someone speaking directly to the people who have sold a house and wanted to re-engage people they didn't talk to for a while just say hey it's been I feel like it's been ages it must be a couple of years at least you know yeah 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 oh, how that's things going Are you enjoying the home like it's not creepy to ask if they like the house you sold it to them and if they don't like it well hallelujah might be able to help them find a new one at least you can do something to solve that yeah anyway team it's uh it's been a pleasure uh, ben, thanks for having me on. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. You've got a hard no. We've got a couple of questions, but you've got you've got a. Hard oh, you no. have? No, no. We'll quickly have me with them. As I say, I think okay. um, I've got about a minute and a half. Okay, <laughs> let's go real quick. Let's go quick. One yeah. question from Kendall. She asked, "What's your number one tip for door knocking?" Uh, smile. Smile. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> number one tip. It is because just remember, so much of your of your communication is nonverbal. I personally, like I went used to door knock on my own. It can be a lot easier and more fun with another person because you get a bit of banter, two more people. Um, so that's a, that would be something if you're finding it hard, like recognize what your challenge is. Are you finding it hard to get to the door in the first place or you're finding it hard once you're at the door? If it's because you're not doing it, get a colleague and say, hey, I need to get door knocking because I need to find some opportunities. And put pro pro, we'll do it together and go with someone. They kind of become like, they hold you accountable because you've got an appointment with them. The easiest appointment to break is the one you make with yourself. So make it with someone else. If you're already at the door, seriously, I think just be curious and friendly and smile. And just ask the questions. Hey, how long have you been here? This is lovely. I'm not like the garden. Hey, you know, I work in real estate. Oh, you guessed that. No, I'm not a Mormon. Hey, um, okay. hey, just actually, seriously, we're just actually offering neighbors some um, free updates on, on where the house value sits. Is that of interest? Yeah, perfect. Simple as that. And one more question. One more question, I promise. Uh, Vix, he's been, he said he's been using text message a lot in his business, but he's always struggled a bit with phone calls. Yep. Um, Very common. Yeah. So recognize that some people are the opposite. Some people love talking and are nervous on email and text and vice versa. Um, I think if you want to be truly great as an agent, phone is your friend. Um, and it's like anything else. The first time you ride a bike, or even if you feel that you're not a very good bike rider, you're a like gangly, you um, you know, you you you're not riding it well. Um, practice does make uh, doesn't make perfect, but it, practice equals progress. Um, and uh, and I would advise, like, uh, Vic, if you watch this, I'm more than happy, um, like, and I'll just extend this to anyone. I, like, I have a five-minute phone call with anyone. People have always been very generous to me in my real estate career. I, like, I'm not going to charge someone to chat to me for five minutes. I'd love to help you. Um, and, and I do think, you know, talk to your manager, suggest, hey, could we do some call sessions together? Find a couple of other people. I think the beautiful thing about coaching is that if you've got another experienced colleague and you're brave enough to say hey i want to get better on the phone could you listen to me and make some recommendations and maybe i could listen to you monkey see monkey do be a sponge practice don't be afraid of failure if you are worried you'll say something stupid well you'll never make the calls if you're worried you won't have the answer for everything well you'll never make the calls nobody does i don't so you don't need an answer for everything mirror shut up ask them questions you'll lead the conversation don't be afraid to get to know and remember especially when it comes to real estate and your prospecting you are going to get a lot of no's because guess what thankfully because it'll be a nightmare for them most people are not making a move right now so they're saying no because they're not making a move. They don't need your help. It's not a no to you. It's just a no for now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, David. Thanks for your time. And thank you everyone for staying on this, what was meant to be a 30 minute, we ended up being an hour. So <laughs> thank you so much, David. Uh, for your time. Have a good rest guys. of your day. Cheers, Have David. a great weekend, guys. And yeah, we'll talk to you later. Get in touch with David if you have any questions or you want a conversation. And uh, if you want to try and nurture out, I'll send you out an email. But thanks. Have a great weekend.